come to order. Clerk will note the roll. There is a quorum. Members, we have the minutes of April 10th before us. Are there any, does anyone like to move the minutes? Representative Anderson S. moves the minutes. Corrections, additions, changes to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the minutes, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion prevails, the minutes are approved. Uh, members, we've got uh, four items of business today. Uh, one is a uh, small amendment to the budget resolution. Uh, then three bills, House File 321, 385, 610. Um, I know that there are some people that have got conflicts with other meetings here, so I'm going to go with the uh, budget resolution first. And so the chair will move the A19 amendment to the budget resolution. And uh, members, as you can see by the spreadsheet, uh, this really does two things. First of all, as you'll recall, there was approximately $314 million that we left unallocated when we did the original budget resolution. This takes $13 million of that money and adds it to the environment target. Uh, secondly, there is a transfer of $27.8 million from the transportation target to the taxes target. And that revolves around, I believe it's the uh, sales tax on leased vehicles that uh, is being dedicated as part of the uh, transportation bill that uh, House Republicans have brought forward. And instead of carrying it in the transportation uh, bill where we would then have to have a stop in the taxes committee, uh, this, is, this transfer is being made so that we can have the tax items in the tax committee where they belong. Uh, and so with that, members, I'd be uh, open to uh, questions or discussion on the A-19 amendment. Representative Carlson. Chairman, I uh, think uh, our side of the table and uh, Representative Hornstein may want to, as our lead on transportation, comment a bit. But uh, I do have a question maybe first uh, on the environmental uh, one. I don't think we have a lot of problem with putting more dollars into the uh, environmental target. In fact, if you'll recall, one of our amendments was to put more funding uh, into the environmental uh, target. But uh, is there a particular reason that we're trying to address that from uh, the original budget resolution? Is there a particular need? I know the resolution doesn't identify how money is going to be spent, but there must be some issue that um, that committee is trying to resolve that they can't under the current target. Well, I think, you know, with all of these uh, bills, we, as you know, Representative Carlson, as uh, time goes on, uh, you learn more. Uh, sometimes you don't necessarily have uh, all the fiscal information uh, when you first set the target and you, you make some assumptions about how you think it's going to turn out and uh, sometimes it turns out the way you think it's going to and sometimes it doesn't and uh, you also have hearings on additional bills that uh, you think about and I guess I would maybe uh, recognize uh, Chair McNamara if he wants to say some more about it in particular since his his committee but I yeah, think Mr. Chairman I'd appreciate it. I was going to ask him to yield if, yeah but if I think would, that so. you know certainly you know as we've looked at it <clears throat> more and seen some of the needs that we feel the committee needs to address we felt it was appropriate to put some additional money in there that we hadn't anticipated at the time we uh, first set the target. Yeah, but, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I uh, was just going to say I don't have an argument about it. Right. Just, it's just kind of the why. Right. Yep. Chair McNamara, do you want to talk some more? <clears throat> well, thank you, Chairman. And Representative Carlson, I think, um, uh, as the Chair alluded to, um, uh, specifically, we had some fiscal notes come back that were significantly different than we thought they might come in at, and that was probably the number one difference. Representative Carlson? Um, well, that answers it, I guess, in, in part without seeing the fiscal notes. I guess it's hard to... Yeah. And, and I know we don't uh, identify or target the uh, dollars, but uh, if that's the reason, fine. I'm yeah. pleased that you're moving in that direction uh, as a result of amendments that we tried to uh, promote the other day so okay thank you representative um, Hornstein then Khan okay thank you mr. chair and um, so I believe what uh, 
what uh, you had mentioned in terms of the lease vehicle money. I think that's one of three uh, general fund shifts in the transportation bill. There's also one, uh, a sales tax on auto parts, uh, and then there's one on uh, rental vehicles. And so I'm wondering why uh, those would not also be uh, sent to the tax uh, uh, target as well. But why just this one? Uh, Representative Hornstein, actually, I believe those others are already in the tax target. Okay. Uh, this was one that uh, is not there. Okay. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I remember, for example, you may recall that the tax target had gone up by, well, I'll... 228, I believe. But right, <laughs> yeah, and then there was 384 also for the sales tax on auto uh, parts, and so I, I believe we had addressed right. those other okay. ones with the, I, with the previous... Okay, I now remember, so thank sure. you. Sure, no, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Representative Kahn. I was going to ask Representative McNamara if he was going to use the extra money to stop screwing the Minneapolis park system. Uh, Representative McNamara, you want to say anything on that? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what, I think, Representative McNamara, your bill has been released, hasn't it? Mr. Chair and Representative Kahn, it has. Yeah. All right. Because if I recall, I think that uh, he just had the governor's original recommendation in regard to the Minneapolis park system. Which the governor had the sense to remove. Mr. Chair, to one point, we actually only include part of the governor's cut to the park. His original cut to the park board was uh, from two funds, the general fund and the natural resources fund. If I remember the second fund's name, we did not include the second more significant cut. We only included one of the two. and. I um, met with the park board people this morning. We look forward to the discussion in the committee on the explanation of where the governor was coming from with his cuts. All right. The, and members, well, of course, Mr. we'll be seeing these Mr. bills Chairman. in this committee in the near future. But Representative Kahn. The governor was coming from vindictive revenge, so at least he backed off it. <laughs> uh, other discussion to the uh, resolution. Representative Carlson? Or I'm sorry, Representative... Well, I'll yield to uh, okay, Representative Horns. Just one, one the same quick way. comment, Mr. Chair, on the on the lease vehicle. And I, you know, I think for many years uh, we had wanted this money to go to transportation. And you know, currently uh, in the House bill, uh, there's a split 50-50 be between Greater Minnesota Transit and then five metro counties uh, getting this, but not Hennepin and Ramsey. And so I think it's a problem that um, you know, the, in the House bill now. Uh, you know, the lease vehicle money that's going uh, to the metro area excludes Hennepin and Ramsey, and I hope that will be corrected as that bill moves forward. Representative Carlson, did you have another um, Mr. Comment? Chairman, I wanted to make that uh, very point. Uh, the, um, a very large percentage of that lease vehicle comes out of Hennepin and Ramsey, and they don't, <coughs> or, they don't uh, gain uh, under the... Uh, current uh, formula, so when you move that uh, money out uh, without knowing exactly what the impact is going to be on Hennepin and Ramsey, uh, there is a new formula being talked about, but it still omits um, two of the key counties that uh, generate a large percentage of that revenue. So I, I do have a concern about that aspect of it, um, and I hope that the Transportation Committee can work that out. Okay, well, I know that, uh, you know, I know you're very familiar with this issue, Representative Carlson, based on the conversation we had before, and I know there's a long history as to uh, why they dedicated the first half of the leased vehicle money the way they did, and I expect that we'll be having that debated in the Transportation Committee and that it will come up here when the Transportation uh, Bill gets here. So, uh, which is going to be Thursday, by the way. Um, yeah, so, I understand they report their bill out this afternoon is what I've heard. Right. Yeah, they're expecting to bring it out this afternoon. Representative Wagenius. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for Representative McNamara, I, un I understand where fiscal notes can come in differently than expected. Uh, could you just share with us which of those, uh, which fiscal notes those were? Representative McNamara. Um, there was a number of them that were, and I don't specifically remember them, no. You don't remember any of them? Um, there was a number of bills. That, uh, they would, if you looked at our spreadsheet, you would see uh, the bills. And I, don't, I didn't bring the spreadsheet with me, Mr. Chair, but 
the spreadsheet shows uh, which bills had significant fiscal notes. So I think if you were to look over our spreadsheet and our bill, you'd begin to understand which ones they are. And I got to be honest, I don't remember. There's a number of fiscal notes in our bill that are multi-million dollar ones that are new initiatives that are really some some good things to be doing and they have significant costs. Seeing no further discussion, the chair will renew his motion that the A-19 amendment to the budget resolution be adopted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion prevails, the A-19 amendment is adopted. All right, we now have uh, three bills. Uh, the first, I believe, is uh, House File 321, Representative Mack. Representative Mack, welcome to the Committee on Ways and Means. Uh, the Chair will move that House File 321 be referred to the General Register. I should maybe say referred back to the General Register, <laughs> but referred to the General Register. And uh, Representative Mack, I think um, I'll have you explain the bill, and then I may yield to uh, Mr. Marks to talk a little bit about the uh, fiscal note issues on this, because this has gone through a variety of uh, oh uh, revisions. Uh, but uh, Representative Mack, to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, members, the bill in front of you has to deal with uh, having Minnesota uh, become a part of something called an interstate physicians compact. Um, and members, uh, what has happened in the past year is that uh, uh, a federation of uh, state licensure boards have come together and basically said that they would like to create a means by which uh, physicians could more easily have um, an interstate license by which they could practice medicine and, and deliver care to patients. And so uh, members, what uh, has developed from that is that seven states need to pass uh, the very language that's in front of you in order to uh, trigger the compact. Um, and six states have signed it so far or passed it so far. So um, when and if Minnesota decides to move this forward, that would in fact trigger the compact, which would be exciting if we were one of the first seven because it puts us in on the ground floor and helping to create what the compact looks like going forward. Um, but members, what this would allow um, is for the ability of, of physicians to get a, a license with any compact state. Um, a couple important things, and, and I know not necessarily relevant to the, the folks of this committee, but has come up quite a bit, is that in order to be a part of the compact or have an interstate license, uh, members would have to be practicing at the highest level within their field or highest level of licensure to be a part of this. Um, the onus in terms of for discipline um, and protection for the patient is where the patient resides. Um, and disciplinary action is where the physician holds um, his, his state license. So it does not in any way minimize the role of our state licensing board in terms of um, actions they can take to um, uh, discipline physicians if there is an, an issue that's brought up. And then um, finally, there is a part in the bill that if for some reason if Minnesota does not see fit that this is working in our best interest or is, is not holding up kind of the level of practice that we've come accustomed to and it, our citizens expect, you can get out of the compact. Um, and so um, I know that the focus of this hearing this morning is to understand the fiscal note. There have been some revisions, and so I know it's the interest of the committee to understand um, uh, the implications of the fiscal note and, and how the board plans to deal with um, the costs of implementing the compact. So with that, Mr. Chair, we do have a testifier uh, from the board that I think could help speak to that issue. All right. Uh, welcome to the committee, ma'am. Could you give us uh, your name for the record and give us your testimony? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Ruth Martinez, the Executive Director of the Board of Medical Practice. <clears throat> welcome to the committee. Thank you. And I just want to offer a couple of comments about the fiscal notes. We have had some revisions. Uh, initially, we had an appropriation written into the fiscal note. I was invited to revisit that primarily because we already have IT staff under contract. So the $35,000 um, appropriation that was initially written in really is a cost that can be absorbed under the current IT contract. And we do already have templates in place for license types. So some of the build out that we initially thought might need to be appropriated actually is cost that can be absorbed under the current IT contract. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marks, can you talk a little bit about the fiscal note and the fiscal note history? And Mr. Chair, members, uh, 
as mentioned, and actually there have been three versions of the fiscal note on, on this particular bill. The, uh, the first version and, and the basis for bringing it to Ways and Means was that uh, the fiscal note did show a $35,000 cost and which would have required an appropriation uh, out of the state government special revenue fund, but, uh, uh, and that appropriation wasn't in the bill language at that time. Uh, we received a revised fiscal note last Thursday, uh, uh, incidentally the same day the bill was sent back to Ways and Means, but uh, that fiscal note showed the board absorbing the costs. Uh, we typically are, fiscal staff anyway, a little suspicious of uh, fiscal notes to talk about absorbing costs, and, and the fiscal note manual says that there's supposed to be an explanation of those costs or what's going to happen, and it's basically that Absorbing costs means that the agency can do it within their existing budget. They don't need appropriations beyond the existing budget to do it. And so that means that uh, something else isn't going to get done or something else is going to get reallocated. Uh, somebody's time is going to be uh, uh, put on this and not doing something else. And that's why the MMB's fiscal note manual says that there needs to be an explanation of it. The second version of the fiscal note that had the absorbing the cost uh, uh, we thought didn't have a very good explanation. That has been expanded in this third version, and I just call your attention to on page three of the fiscal note, uh, uh, about a quarter of the way down the page where the double asterisks are there, it explains that, uh, what was referenced about the board's IT staff, and it explains how they're going to uh, absorb this function within their existing budget. So, so that's, that's where it's at at this point. It would not require an additional appropriation given their explanation. <coughs> Right. Anyone have any questions for the author or, or Mr. Marks, Representative Carlson, then Liebling? Yeah, my, uh, Mr. Chairman, mine is on the fiscal note if you want to. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, I know that uh, there's rather broad based support from the uh, medical uh, community. Uh, my question is is there any opposition to the bill and uh, where would that opposition come from and uh, why are they opposed to the bill? Representative Mack. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Carlson. Um, to my knowledge, I have not had anybody um, come forward with um, any opposition. I guess in one testimony, we did have uh, some testimony from uh, Twyla Brace with some concerns about possibly leading to a national licensure. I believe that was the focus of um, that concern. Um, Mr. And Jim, I'm I didn't sorry. Hear and who you said that that was? Um, that was uh, Twyla Brace, and who represents the Citizens Council on Health Freedom, I believe. Oh, I, I know who you're referring to. Thank okay, you. just okay. And so there were some concerns, um, and as well as the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, uh, do oppose it. Um, I understand for that same reason, concern towards a national licensure. I would argue that um, I think that this sets us up for um, protections against a national licensure. A lot of physicians would like the ability to uh, be licensed in multiple states. And just to clarify, physicians right now can be licensed in multiple states. And I should have said this at the beginning, Mr. Chair, but um, it can be a very long, lengthy process, six to eight months, in order to have that done. What this compact would do is it would create a streamlined system by which a physician could be um, licensed in another state in addition to the one where they were originally licensed, um, maybe a, a three to six week process, so quite a bit quicker. Um, and we know from some of our great providers here in Minnesota, um, Mayo, among others, where it, they could be a tremendous asset to have licenses in various states. Um, and as we see the use of telemedicine expanding and getting used more and more, um, it could work in really nice concert with that. And so um, there, there is some concern out there. The two groups that I mentioned are the only two that I know of. Representative Carlson. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I understand well uh, the uh, interest that the proponents have and personally I happen to agree with them, but uh, I did hear that there was some opposition uh, somewhere in the process and uh, was just interested in what that opposition may have been. Thank you. Sure. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I support the bill, and I'm a co-author on the bill, and glad that this is moving forward. My question really is to the fiscal note, and um, so, Ms. Martinez, um, uh, as I understand, um, special revenue funds is what would have funded this had there been a cost, and um, those, of course, are come from fees that are paid by the by the uh, license holders. And um, the, the um, amount that is going to be absorbed, um, I'd just like to get a bit of perspective on that and just ask you 
how much is in the special revenue yeah. fund because I'm I'm just thinking that um, well I don't really understand kind of why the urgency to get rid of the fiscal note here because it didn't seem that unreasonable to me in the first place except of course it's all relative to what's available and um, I'm a little bit just wondering what happens if it turns out that the board does need to spend a little money on this, which I personally think would be fine, but that, that of course depends on whether there's money available and I'm not sure what would happen then if there's nothing appropriated. So could you talk about all that a little bit? Ms. Martinez. Mr. Chair, <coughs> Representative Liebling, thank you for that question. Uh, I don't know the actual dollar amount. I don't have those figures with me, but I do know that we have a regular appropriation for IT services for maintenance and build out and so forth. And when we initially wrote the fiscal note, I, I don't think that I was fully appreciating that we already had so much of the templates already in place. And so as I was invited to revisit this and look at it as a, an appropriation versus a uh, cost that could be absorbed, it really did look like something that we had sufficient funds to cover. And you make an excellent point, this is all in the special revenue fund and we are, as you know, funded by our licensure fees and not by general fund dollars. So this, um, we believe that we have a sufficient amount of money in the coffers to handle this particular absorption. Representative Liebling. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess maybe, maybe then the question would be perhaps for Mr. Marks. So if, you know, if as this rollout moves along, if there should be a need for something additional, how does that get handled at that point when we're outside of the ability of the legislature to appropriate, we're out of session, say, and there's, say, there's money in the special revenue fund, um, do they have to come back with a deficiency next session or um, just how would that work, Mr. Marks? If you Mr. Would. Marks. Um, Mr. Chair and Representative Liebling, there would be a couple options there. The, uh, certainly one would be that they would come back with a request next session to add more money to their appropriation to cover this. Uh, if it was a, a really urgent situation, I believe there's a contingent appropriation to the state government special revenue fund which can be released with certain conditions. If it's small enough, uh, the commissioner of MMB or the governor can do it. If it's bigger, it needs to have the advice of the Legislative Advisory Commission. Uh, but I. And the most likely situation here would be to reconsider next session if uh, if this goes through without any additional money this year. Okay, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, it just I don't want to have, um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that it happens, that it can happen, and that there's no hold up. And not, you know, I, I, um, you know, it's great if you can have a zero fiscal note. And if we'd had that before, I'm sure Representative Mack would have preferred not to come here at all. <laughs> but. Um, you know, I just hope that we're by in our urgency to have a zero that we're not going to hamstring the the board. And I know you're not saying that, you, you know, but um, <coughs> just that as we heard earlier, we adjusted a target because some fiscal notes came in a little higher than had been expected and so on. And we know that costs can move around a little bit from what you expect. So um, I guess I'm just, just putting that concern out there because I think this is a really important project and hope that it can move forward and that we can be a leader in this. And I know this is very bipartisanly, very well supported. I haven't heard from members any opposition to it. So I'm um, just looking forward to seeing it move forward. Uh, Ms. Martinez. Mr. Chair, Representative Liebling, thank you. I, I shared your concerns and I went through these numbers in great detail with our uh, finance officer wanting the same assurance that you have that we really did have sufficient funds to cover this absorption and I feel very comfortable that we will be A-OK. -okay. Thank you. Representative Albright. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. and Representative Mack or Ms. Martinez, I'm not sure who would want to take this, but you mentioned your telemedicine bill which is moving through the process and I'm curious as we go through uh, this compact and, and the member states that would be involved with it, how will, uh, in, in the context of, of billing, be done for um, consults between the uh, physicians if that's been construed and part of this is the compact? Is it, am, I, am I not understanding it? But if, if you've got someone from uh, a member uh, state that would be through say the telemedicine and you're consulting on, a, on a, a single patient, how do you bill for that? Who's going to be responsible for that? 
Representative Mack or Ms. Martinez? Uh, thank Representative you, Mr. Mack. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Albright. Um, Representative Albright, the details of that question, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know the exact answer, um, as this, this is just dealing with the licensure issue, and I think that question probably gets into um, the payers and the plans and how all that works, some of which the telemedicine bill is dealing with. Um, and so I, none of that would be addressed in the bill in front of you right now. This just has to do with licensure. Thank you, um, so would happy to follow up offline as it relates to other bills. Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this doesn't really have, my question doesn't have anything to do with the finance, which probably gets me in trouble in the committee. But um, Article 5 deals with an application and issue, issuance of expedited license, and Article 6, the fee for that same process. Earlier you said that this would allow for a six to eight week licensure of a physician. Uh, is the six to eight weeks what you were calling expedited? Uh, Representative Mack. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Mahoney, and I'll maybe defer to Ms. Martinez just to make sure, but yes, that, that is what I was referring to, that this would be an, an expedited licensure compared to what it takes right now for an, any individual physician to get a license in another state. But I will defer to Ms. Martinez just to bring clarity to that. Ms. Martinez. Mr. Chair, Representative, thank you for the question. This will certainly expedite the licensure process. What it will do is when an individual becomes licensed in one state, it will expedite the licensure in each state thereafter. So they'll really be vetted in one state at this high standard, and then they will have an expedited process in compact states. So they won't have to go through that same lengthy vetting process in each individual state, and that's where the expedited license occurs. I'm not sure if that answers the question. So. Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so uh, the expedited license that you're talking about refers to, uh, th that's referred to in the bill is just that which you've referred to earlier in, in the earlier presentation to the bill. You're not taking one from six to eight weeks down to six to eight days. Unlikely. Um, yeah. Ms. Martinez. Mr. Chair, Representative Mahoney, the, the uh, license could be issued as quickly as an individual applicant can get all of the information into the primary state of licensure. So as soon as that application file is complete and one board can act on it, it will, the, the license can be issued. So even here in Minnesota in a routine application, if everything comes in quickly, we can, we can issue a license very quickly even now, but this will make it even quicker across state lines. And, and Mr. Chair, just uh, to... Representative Mack. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And to Representative Mahoney's question, just to... I think maybe to Representative Mahoney, you're wondering if there's a couple different tiers of licensure that we're talking about, and it's, 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 it's not that. It's expedited licensure is what we're talking about as a whole in this bill. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion... The chair will renew his motion that House File 321 be referred to the General Register. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. House File 321 is referred to the General Register. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Mack. Next bill is House File 385, Representative Hortman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Representative Hortman, welcome to the Committee on Ways and Means. Uh, why don't you go ahead and present House File 385. The Chair will move that House File 385 be referred to the General Register. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members, we're here because of a, a change in the fiscal note from when we left uh, state government finance. And basically, the change has to do with some uh, changes that the Secretary of State's office will make to their computer to deal with the changes in statute that we're making. House file 385 deals with conversions of corporations. And what it does is it makes some conforming changes so that conversions um, under old law match up with the new Limited Liability Corporation Act, which goes into effect this year in August, on August 1st. Last year we passed the new LLC statute. 
and the business law section discovered, we, we put a delayed effective date on it on purpose so that the business law section could do exactly the type of homework that they then did. And they determined there was some additional changes in law that needed to be made in the area of conversions so that the um, old LLC statute and the new LLC statute would work seamlessly together. But as a result of some of the changes that need to be made um, for the business law section, there will be some computer changes needed in the Secretary of State's office, and they will pay for those out of a special technology fund that they have. So since that's not the same thing as technically absorbing the cost, they will actually do the expenditure, we need to go through ways and means and get your okay on that. Thank you. Any questions for Representative Hortman? And Mr. Chair, or Mr. Black, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, thank you. My name is Bert Black. I'm the legal advisor for the Office of the Secretary of State. I just want to point out that the, uh, there is no, uh, as Representative Hortman said, there's no general fund appropriation. And the uh, funds for the work, uh, which is about uh, 400 staff hours of computing time, uh, are to come from the already created uh, Uniform Commercial Code account, which is already appropriated to the Office of the Secretary of State for improvements such as this under 336.1-110. Thank you, Mr. Black. Discussion to the bill? Guess you're going to get off easy today, Representative Hortman. Mr. Chair, my bills sometimes are so boring that nobody can think of any good questions. <laughs> All right. The Chair will renew his motion that House File 385 be referred to the General Register. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. House File 385 is referred to the General Register. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Thank you, members. Uh, next and final bill is House File 610, Representative Dabney. Good morning, Mr. Representative Chair. Representative Dabney, welcome to the Committee on Ways and Means. The Chair will move that House File 610 be referred to the General Register. Thank you for the... Uh, Opportunity and thank you to Mr. Stone for his uh, assistance in scheduling this hearing. Uh, sure, please uh, present your bill, sir. Well, I, I, I hope I'm, you know, like Hortman level of boring uh, on this. Uh, I've, a constituent brought me this bill. He's got a, uh, a trailer on a piece of land up north. It's a, classified as a towed recreational vehicle, although it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Uh, and currently he has to spend, I think it's $20 a year and an hour or so in the deputy registrar's office uh, to get it licensed. And he'd much rather spend that hour out on the lake or uh, knocking around doing whatever um, and only have to uh, license tab it every three years. Um, as initially introduced, this bill just said every three years, the deputy registrars had uh, an issue with that, so we made it optional. You get to choose as the taxpayer whether you uh, take the time to label it every uh, or license it every year or every three years. Your fees that you pay are increased uh, triple if you do it every three years. The, over the long term, the uh, revenue into the state is the same. Uh, there's a little hiccup here, as you can see on the fiscal note, because we go to, to a potentially every three-year cycle and we budget on a two-year cycle. And that, uh, Mr. Chair, I think is the, the fiscal impact of the bill. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Representative Davney. questions for Representative Davney. Uh, Representative Carlson and Murphy. Well, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to double check. He was hoping that his bill would be as boring as the previous one. And is your count the same as mine, that there are eight people on the list with questions? <laughs> well, you've already asked the question, Representative Carlson, so Nine. it's obviously not as boring. <laughs> I see questions uh, popping up. Representative Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, Representative Daphne, I'd just like to clarification on what the deputy registers think about this. Our representative Dabney. Madam Chair, I believe their uh, representative in the room is in the room, but I believe their uh, neutral would be an appropriate description. Is there anyone that would like to testify on the bill? Okay. Uh, representative um, Mahoney. No, no, I'm just. Oh, all right. <laughs> just My colleague from Minneapolis. Representative Detmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Would this apply to uh, motorhome or trailer parks? where the trailers are situated. 
or pretty much permanently. Uh, Representative Dabney. M Mr. Chair, I would need to phone a friend for the uh, functional definition of towed recreational vehicle. I suspect since uh, manufactured homes are not towed, at least more than once generally, uh, no. But uh, I'm a little fuzzy, but there's somebody else who's not. <coughs> uh, welcome back to the committee. Uh, please you. state your name for the record and give us your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, Pat McCormick, the Director of Driver and Vehicle Services. And this would only apply to recreational vehicles that are towed, so it wouldn't be anything that's a permanent fixture. Okay. Representative uh, Nornis, then Liebling. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a, a brief uh, comment. I licensed my, my boats on a three-year basis. <laughs> I wish you had included, and I know you have excluded it, but my motorhome would be handy if I didn't have to go back every year and license that too. But, uh, you know, just a, I think it's a good bill. Thank you. Representative Dabney, I was going to ask yes. that uh, same question. Is there any particular reason you only had towed recreation of vehicles and not self-propelled recreational ones? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, my constituent owns a towed vehicle and not a self-propelled one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Repre Representative Liebling. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I thought since we have an hour left, maybe we could use it on <laughs> Representative Gabney's bill. But uh, <laughs> he doesn't look amused, yeah. Representative Dabney. Entirely. But, um, but my question is, we just I think we just passed a bill off the House floor that allows, or maybe it wasn't off the House floor, that allows people to get refunds for registration if they cancel their registration. And, uh, and now here's a bill that allows you to get a registration for three years instead of one. So I'm wondering what's going to happen now. Is there an interaction there? Are we going to have three-year registrations where after, after a year, a year in, your constituent says, this is a piece of junk. I'm just getting rid of it now. Give me a refund. Uh, Representative Daphne, or otherwise I can make a comment on that too. Uh, Mr. Chair, that would only be speculation on my part. Okay. I, I'm thinking, <laughs> Representative Liebling, and someone else may correct me on this, but I think you're referring to a bill uh, that Representative Runbeck had that was through this committee, I believe, on Friday. And I, if I recall correctly, and you know, Representative Hornstein in particular, who's more well-versed in transportation issues than I am, can maybe correct me. I think that there you could get the refund, but only if you applied for it within, I think it was 10 days of when the registration started. So I don't know that it would affect Representative Dabney's bill. Okay. Uh, Representative Liebling? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So then, Representative Dabney, is this then where everybody goes to three years, or only if you choose to, you can? Uh, Representative Dabney. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Representative Liebling. It's left to the taxpayer to, to make the decision. Uh, okay, and so, Mr. Chair, so if, you, so if you do it for three years, and then you, after a year you say, I'm junking this thing, it's, you, it's on you, in other words. All right, exactly. thank you. I'm wondering if I could have Ms. Uh, McCormick come back. I've got a question for her. Any other uh, questions or discussion while she's coming forward? Ms. McCormick, I'm wondering, would the department have any position on also having self-propelled recreational vehicles covered by this uh, same change? Mr. Chair and members of the committee, I would need to go back and talk to the experts in terms of uh, the registration, um, if there'd be a, uh, an impact on that. So I would be glad to get back to the committee as soon as possible. Well, I, yeah, I guess why don't you, if you would, get back to me and maybe get back to Representative Davney. I, I don't know how other members feel, and I guess I wouldn't want to do something that would create controversy with Representative Davney's bill, but if everyone felt that that was a good addition, perhaps it would be a floor amendment that could be considered. Um, I don't know. Let's. I guess that would have a monetary impact, too, though, I suppose. So, um, well, anyway, let us know anyway. Uh, other uh, discussion to the bill? Uh, seeing none, the chair will, did you have a discussion, Representative Carlson? No. Oh, okay. Other uh, than Mr. Chairman, we must be pretty close to my number eight. 
You know, I think we're at number seven. If someone else would like to speak, we could get up to number eight. <laughs> Good estimate. <laughs> David was trying to get his arm up. <laughs> All right. That was just tongue in cheek, but we did get pretty close to the eight. <laughs> <laughs> See no further discussion. The chair will renew his motion that House File 610 be referred to the General Register. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Al from motion prevails. House File 610 is referred to the General Register. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Thank you, Representative Davney. And with that, members, uh, we are adjourned until Thursday.